All right. So I am super excited to chat with Dr. Anna Kabeka as we are going to be discussing a unique approach to optimizing sex hormones during menopause, talking about alkalinizing the body as well as maca root. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun just chatting with Dr. Anna. So I'm going to dive into her bio here, which is very impressive. Uh, she is the best-selling author of The Hormone Fix and Keto Green 16 and Menopause. So Dr. Anna is triple board certified and a fellow of gynecology and obstetrics, integrative medicine and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. She holds special certifications in functional medicine, sexual health, and biodensical hormone replacement therapy. She lectures frequently on these topics throughout the world to large audiences and is known nationally as the Girlfriend Doctor and is host of the Girlfriend Doctor Show. She has personally developed natural products to help women balance hormones and thrive through menopause, including the highly acclaimed Jova Cream for the vulva and Mighty Maca Plus, which is a powerful superfood blend. She now lives in Dallas with her daughters, horses, and dogs. And thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Anna. How great to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, uh, again, the pleasure is all mine. And let's start out with a little bit of a background. How did you start helping women? Uh, like, how did you get more into an integ integrative approach in your practice? Yeah, no, thank you so much. Like the First of all, it was really recognizing in residency. I went to an osteopathic medical school. So then I went to residency at Emory University, so a very allopathic institution. And during that time, my mom, who had been part of, you know, like the, the best, uh, you know, getting the best health care through our U.S. our U.S. military and some of the best doctors that we had in Northeast Pennsylvania, um, she passed away undergoing a second heart surgery. So I was in residency at this time. And I thought to myself, you know, God, you know, like first that should never have happened. This was a surgery I was supposed to give her another 15 years. Right. And. And so it really made me look to our roots. Like, how was it that we, you know, like my mom and, and, and two of her brothers out of, out of nine siblings, all three that came to the U.S. were now deceased prior to other younger um, uh, relatives, I mean, other older relatives in the, in the Middle East that were in war-torn war areas. And so it made me think, like, you know, what is the underlying root cause? And that led me to a very integrative approach, you know, leaning on my osteopathic background, digging into uh, functional medicine and root cause medicine. It took me on a journey. It took me on a journey. And then I had my own personal health crisis with early menopause, pre-diabetes, um, like nearing pre-diabetes, uh, obesity, well over 240 pounds, working 80 to 100 hours a week, and then diagnosed with early menopause at 39 years old and was told I would never be able to have a, another child. That literally took me on a journey around the world looking for answers. And, um, and that with the grace of God, reversed early menopause and then naturally conceived and had my youngest daughter at age 41. So uh, spontaneously, no intervention and uh, just a blessing. So I'm like, I'm now 57 with a 15 year old and God help me. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderful story. And so, uh, so, so you mentioned you're 57 now. H how do you feel? I imagine you're feeling pretty good. I'm amazing. I came out of retirement. No. <laughs> I feel amazing. So I really I definitely recognize um, when things are off. And I see this in, in my patients too. Like they know they've known things are off, and yet they've had the symptom treatment approach versus the root cause approach. And so I think that's really important. Like when I first came, I moved from uh, Texas. I mean, I moved from Georgia during the during the pandemic to Dallas, Texas, because there was a rodeo school nearby that my daughter was training at. So yeah, so we got my my young my youngest um, who is just loving horses. And so we came during the pandemic, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've lived on an island for 22 years, St. Simon's Island, Georgia, just south of where you are, Eric. And, um, and I, they've got the best restaurants, no lines, no traffic. Oh my God. I love this city. It was July, 2020. <laughs> 
So traffic is a whole nother story right now. It takes me an hour to get, tw you know, uh, 20 miles, but it is, um, we're here because we've got the horses and she's still in rodeo and, and I just started, uh, work, you know, back in clinical practice here. So it tells you energy and vitality and, you know, you know, what are your, you know, to pursue your dreams at any age for everyone listening, not to give up, not to give up. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had a lot of people tell you, you don't definitely don't look 57. You look Thank a you. lot younger. And I, I bring that up, just the, the question, how do you feel? Because a lot of women who are in menopause, I mean, a lot of women in general don't feel good, but really the focus here is menopause and, and it's not normal to feel lousy. It's common, but not normal, correct? That's right. I always like to say menopause is natural and mandatory. Suffering is optional and that it takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. You mentioned that my first book is The Hormone Fix. And this it really is my Mac just came out in paperback yesterday. So I'm like carrying this around with me. It's so nice. You know, hardbacks, I love them, but they're so heavy. So um, the, you know, it's, it's my magnus opus. I mean, go into details about the many things we can do to resuscitate our glandular function, like we do with our adrenal glands. So how we can use lifestyle and how, what we do with our thyroid to resuscitate our thyroid gland, to reconnect our mind and body together, the whole HPA, you know, hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal, thyroid axis connected to its communicating heart and mind together. I mean, it is, that is, that's the practice of good medicine. That's the practice of good medicine. And, um, yeah. And I reflect upon that as I think of the hundreds of thousands of dollars I spent on my education and how many years <laughs> it's all come in handy. It has all come in handy, but, um, you know, like, and now I tell people get a good night's sleep. You got to eat better. For me, it's the keto green lifestyle. You got to think positive, right? And you got to move more. You got to laugh more. You have to play more. I'm going to, you know, yeah. So what I can actually do with my prescription pad and surgical knife is, is, you know, is, is, very little is necessary. Not none, but very little. Yeah. Still got to claim yeah. some. Yeah. Excellent book. I actually listened to it on Audible. So for those who prefer listening, mm -hmm. definitely check out Dr. Anna's book on Audible or again, get that paperback. And so a big reason why I call this episode and decide to name it like a unique approach to optimizing hormones is because in your book, you actually don't really, not that you don't talk about, of you talk about estrogen and progesterone, but you don't really focus on those primarily. When you talk about like the three main hormones, well, why don't you talk about that? I don't want to steal your thunder. So what yeah. are the three main hormones that you focus on? Yeah, so true. I mean, as a gynecologist and obstetrician, I studied all the reproductive hormones, the pathways, the enzymes that take them down a certain pathway and et cetera, right? Like, you know, starting um, with cholesterol to progesterone to DHEA to um, testosterone and estrogen. And then when I realized going through my own health journey, my own health crisis in uh, a second menopause, let's say in my at 40, age 47, 48, I um, recognized that even though my hormones were dialed in, things were still off, the hot flashes, the mood swings, the difficulty sleeping, the anxiety. And I had my hormones dialed in. I mean, I was a hormone specialist. I mean, I lecture on this stuff, right? And, um, and it recognized that the the, like if we look at our hormones as that, and this is the best way I can explain, or I found to explain it, is that if we consider our hormones like the students at a university. So every student at a university has its own purpose, its own mission, its own, you know, like its own goals. And, and so that's awesome. And then the professors of the university, now these are, consider these two more powerful hormones, right? They're leading a student body. And if they're not doing well, they're chaotic. They come in drunk or high or whatever, and there's chaos in the classroom, right? And so for me, those, those professors are our hormones, insulin and cortisol. When, insulin, when we're insulin resistant and insulin screaming essentially at the students to get in order. I mean, it's, there's, there's chaos in the body and it leads to inflammation and cortisol dysregulation leads to acidifying physiology. And when our body's in a breakdown mode, and it's really dangerous for women in the perimenopause and menopause and post at any age, of course, is, but 
definitely during this time period, because we are, um, you know, we're, we're more susceptible without those higher levels of reproductive hormone and testosterone compared to men, for instance. So cortisol is very acidifying to the body. And then if we look at what I, I like to consider the dean of the university, because someone's governing the professors, right? If, if they're, if they're, you know, left on their own or they're mismanaged or they're being, you know, yelled at or, or whatever the situation, if it's a bad academic environment, head, the head of the university isn't doing a good job, then the professors aren't going to be doing well and the students won't be doing well. But for me, the dean of the university is oxytocin. Oxytocin is the most powerful hormone of our body. And when it is on, when it is prioritized in our life through, through, through many things, through, through, our body makes oxytocin naturally by loving, by playing, by orgasm, by massage, by doing things we love, getting out in nature, having fun, all of these things is that creates the hormone of oxytocin. And it's a very benevolent hormone, a very godly hormone. It's the hormone of positivity, joy, goodness, generosity, kindness, the gifts of the spirits, as it says in the Bible. So it's, uh, you know, and, and that's oxytocin as the, as the head of the university. So I, I, I look at those three and if we, if I, as a, as a, as a physician, I want to do things efficiently as a, as a woman and a mom and a single mom and all the many hats we have, we can go through treating. Okay. Let's do the hot flashes this way. Let's do the anxiety, treat the anxiety this way. Let's treat the insomnia with this thing. But when we, when it comes down to the most powerful changes I can make, it's by empowering oxytocin then managing cortisol and insulin, and then the other reproductive hormones. That's the hormonal hierarchy. Now, with cortisol, it the if you have problems with, I mean, most people have chronic stress these days, and that is a big problem when it comes to healthy oxytocin production, correct? Because you, you talk about this in your book, if you have you know, I believe like elevated cortisol, it's gonna, uh, chronically elevated cortisol, it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible to have healthy oxytocin levels? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so if you're in this high stress state, like you think if you're like a soldier on the front lines and you're charging forward towards the enemy, it's not a time to love your enemy, right? So they don't exist in unison very, very well. And the big thing with cortisol, it's like to remember, you know, we are hundred percent capable of managing our stress, our thoughts around stress, our internal environment is not dependent on our external environment. And I've been to the pits of hell. I've been to the depths of grief and sadness and, and despair. And I say that with complete compassion for those of you listening that are, that are struggling. Our internal environment is not subject to our external, is independent of our external environment. I remember a urologist uh, in med school and he taught, he said to me one day, he goes, you know, Anna, you're the only one who can upset yourself. And I was like, ah, oh, no, my boyfriend, he can really piss me off. And he said, no, you choose how to react. You choose how to respond in that situation. You choose what you put your energy on. And I'll never forget that statement because it was, he was totally correct to just reframe it in my mind. And it was like all that, all that stress went away. And it is, it is the blessing of the present moment. It is the gift of the of being present. So you like present presence, combine those two. You want a gift, get present. And that is where we really do. Um, we really do have some, some control, a lot of control. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely agree with you. Um, and then there are certain tools that could help. I don't know if you still use this, but in your book, you mentioned the Muse headset. Do you still yes. use that? Yeah, I actually have it on my desk upstairs. I'm downstairs in my home office right now, but I have the Muse headset. I got to get back on, on doing that for focused meditation, especially when your thoughts are so distracted to bring you very clearly into this, into this present, to be able to focus attention. Yeah, that Muse is really good. Biofeedback is amazing for this reality check. Yeah, I, I never use that. Uh, I use the, you also, I think, mentioned the inner balance from heart math, like heart rate variability. So, yes. so I've been using that for a number of years. There's a, a lot of great tools out there to help with stress management. And then with the insulin resistance part, is that where the keto green 
um, keto green diet and just trying to get people into ketosis? Yeah. So um, the keto green uh, program, it's key. It, the big things about it, I'm grabbing some water here. Um, the beauty about keto green, it's not just a diet, it's a lifestyle. And the keto part is the part that like when we're managing our blood sugars, when we're becoming more insulin sensitive, when we're, when we stop snacking, cut out sugars and high carbs and, um, intermittent fast, we become more insulin sensitive. That is key to managing progesterone, testosterone, estrogen, and where they're going. I mean, that is a, a, a really important um, factor. So many people and women, and this whole concept of insulin resistance, it's so crucial because women in perimenopause become uh, more insulin resistant. And those that are suffering from hot flashes, you know, you think the answer is estrogen, the answers become is about becoming more insulin sensitive. And insulin resistance is a cause of unrelenting hot flashes. So, you know, I, and I didn't know this when I started with my keto green program, but patients were saying, Oh, my gosh, you know, I've, I don't have hot flashes, I was having them every 20 minutes, and they're gone, like within two weeks of following the keto green diet and lifestyle, because you're becoming more insulin sensitive, and your body is just like, Oh, man, I can I can chill out now. I can rest. And the same with cortisol, the alkalinizing factors in foods that we eat, the mineral content, nutrient content, fiber to feed the gut, all of those good things are critically important for our body's um, gut microbiome and metabolism. So that alkalinize, and when, because also when we're fasting for extended periods, when we're um, in ketosis for extended periods, we can shift into a more acidotic um, state. And so checking urine pH, blood pH isn't going to change much, but urine pH is a really good biomarker. And so the alkalinizing foods, but that's also the cortisol piece because cortisol is acidifying, oxytocin is alkalinizing. So you can be eating the perfect green diet and still be in a very inflamed, acidic, imbalanced state because of cortisol. So by, again, empowering the most powerful hormone in our body, oxytocin, with gratitude, um, you know, gratitude practice, journaling, positivity mindset, focus, you know, presence, um, working in the here and now, that can make a huge difference on your physiology. So that was so eye-opening for me as I, you know, went through my own journey and and uh, figured out what was going on and then, you know, looked at. And what does the research say about this? It's been it's been fascinating. So much more needs to be done in women's health. Yeah, and it sounds so simple, yet most aren't doing it. I mean, just even like you said, the practice of expressing gratitude every day. It's something that it's not going to take an hour or two for people to do, but you know, most people won't block out the time just to take a you know few minutes to do that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I found a really helpful tip. You know, and if you. I can share with your audience is that the practice that I have that really has kept me alive is before I even open my eyes in the morning, I think of where, you know, it's a reflection on the, the day before, where did I see love yesterday? Where was I loving? Where did I see love? Where was I love? And, um, and what am I grateful for? And where could I have laughed or where did I laugh or could have laughed more? Like what was amusing? <laughs> And those three questions, I tell you, before I open my eyes is a practice that I do every day. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, thanks for sharing that. And then, so as far as being alkaline, you said you test the urine pH and that's first thing in the morning or throughout the day or both, both of those? Yeah. Like every time you pee initially, when you start out, check your urine pH regularly. It is what gets measured gets managed. So it's eye opening. I mean, after a workout, you're going to be acidic, but I want you to wake up alkaline. I want you to go to bed alkaline because your body needs to rest and repair itself while you're sleeping. And you'll see the nights you're more alkaline, the deeper sleeps you get sleep you get. And you'll also recognize that you wake up more alkaline when you're, you know, not sleeping through the night and you'll wake up more acidic. So it's a good marker and you understand what's happening to your physiology. And it just gives you one measure to say, okay, well, what can I do to improve this outcome? 
Maca root. So I want to talk about Maca root because I haven't had an expert on Maca and I've been taking your mighty Maca. I've been adding it to your to, to, to my smoothies. So why do you like Maca root? What's some of the benefits of Maca root? And if you could talk a little bit of what differentiates your product. I know it's not just Maca, so that's one of the things. It's, it has other things in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a part of my healing journey when, when I was 39 and diagnosed with infertility and early menopause, and again, I was devastated. Um, I um, went on a healing journey. I took my, uh, our, our, our girls were seven and nine at the time. And uh, I had one in college. And um, we went on this healing journey. And one of the first places we went was to Peru because one of the nurses that worked with me in my private practice was a nurse midwife in Peru before she came to the U.S. And, and she worked in my clinic. She's still working with me since 2000. She's had different roles throughout the year. So 23 years she's worked with me. Anyway, I loved her family. And we went to see her family in Peru. And everywhere we went, they would say, well, if you're infertile, they, you know, drink maca. If you're tired, drink maca. And they would elbow my husband, give him a wink and say, it's the Peruvian Viagra. So y'all know we were drinking some maca, right? <laughs> but I couldn't stand the taste. I'm from a family of, of chefs, of cooks, of bakers, of gourmands. And so, um, so I was like, okay, well, if this is such a powerful superfood and, and the history of maca is fascinating. Um, and, and that was the first thing I'm like, okay, well, what is this as the skeptical, you know, doctor scientist that, that I am, what is, um, about maca that makes it so amazing. And, and the research shows that, well, maca has specific proteins that are unique to it, macaines. And it also is rich in arginine, which increases nitric oxide, which increases blood flow, which lo and behold is how Viagra works. I was like, huh fascinating. And it's adaptogenic. It's, it really helps you in times of high stress, low stress as a preventative. I mean, it is, this was so much good about maca in and of itself, Peruvian maca. And so I started using maca, but I started mixing it like, well, what other superfoods are out there? Because I couldn't stand the taste. I'm from a belief that if you have an aversion to something that you're, that's supposed to be good for you, you know, it's, it, it just partially de defeats the purpose for sure. So I started mixing it with other superfoods, cat's claw herb in Peru, acerola, um, cherry, you know, what are some of the, you know, mangosteen and um, green tea extract and, and finding superfoods as we traveled around the world, part of this um, miraculous healing journey that we had. And I started blending these things together and lo and behold, my periods returned, um, my, um, and then, you know, within, you know, uh, a year or so, I mean, not too much, let's see, you know, during some time in that journey, 2007 or six, seven, eight became pregnant with my daughter, Ava Marie. And so, um, I really, when I came back to Georgia, I was like, I have to keep taking these superfoods. I have to keep taking it. And um, I worked with the manufacturer to reproduce what I was making with using organic Peruvian maca, the highest quality ingredients and blending them together. And what we found is, and you know, just a small amount for me, my family, you know, some of my patients. So my first batch was 500 bottles. That was the smallest batch that they would let us make. And um and, you know, within, within months that was gone, within just a couple months that was gone because word of mouth, it just started spreading. And now we're all around the world with Mighty Maca. But what we've seen clinically is the most important. We have Mighty Maca babies. We've seen a reduction in hot flashes. We um, see an improvement in day 21 progesterone. We see an improvement in DHEAS. We've seen an improvement by up to 70 to 200% in two months of adrenal function. I mean, that is just taking Mighty Maca Plus for two months. We've seen a 70 to 200% to improvement in, in, um, in adrenal function. And the reason I combine certain of the ingredients, the fibers, the enzymes, the um, liver support, the detoxification support is because our, you know, is it was part of that is to support our body's natural hormone production so that we can use more of what, you know, we resuscitate the 
glands, like I mentioned earlier, so that our body is using more of the hormones that we're um, designed to use. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. Like I said, I've been adding it to my smoothie. I've been adding And it tastes great. Soup. It does. Yeah. It's, uh, I've been adding it to my wife's smoothie and she's very particular. She's very picky when it comes to taste and all that. So, uh, so yeah, definitely could vouch for the taste. I haven't not added it like outside of my smoothie, but it definitely, I, I think if anything, it does make the smoothie better. Definitely there, there are other powders I've added where you can notice that it makes it you know, almost unbearable. So it definitely yeah. does not do that. It's yeah, de good tasting. And um, yeah, so thank you for talking about maca. I asked someone else in the podcast uh, a while back over a year ago, and she didn't really have knowledge about maca. And just again, I was excited to chat with you about, about the maca. And, um, and you also have another product, Jolva. Yes. Yeah. So that's another product I created from my own my own health journey, but also as a gynecologist, seeing women suffer unnecessarily with vaginal dryness initially through my work with patients who had had a history of breast cancer and working on optimizing their sexual function, I found out that we can use androgens and proandrogens like DHEA to help improve um, the vaginal tissue and very safely, it's not contraindicated in women who have had breast cancer or any cancer. And actually healthy levels of DHEA are a marker for a decreased risk of cancer. And so um, I started, you know, compounding formulas for sexual health and vaginal formulas, topical formulas, and, um, and for compliance, I create and, and for my own self and my patients, I created my product Jolva. So to use to help with the whole vulvar area, the perineum, for sexual health, but also for incontinence, for bladder health, for vaginal support. Um, it, it, it just has been a blessing in so many ways. And I combined it with plant stem cells from the Alpine Rose, which are known to um, decrease, like they're part of really high-end cosmetics because it is anti-aging. It helps with collagen formation, decreases fine lines and wrinkles. And I always say, you know, I'll enjoy my laugh lines and smile lines here, but the effects they have down there, are, we don't want them. So incontinence issues, la lack of pleasure, discomfort, pain. I had a patient in my clinic yesterday, Eric, and and she'd been married. She's been married uh, twenty eight years, and she's in her. Um, late fifties now. And she just said that it's like a ring of fire when she has sex and she's been struggling with this has been to her primary care has been to her gynecologist and they gave her some vaginal estradiol ta tablets, but she's not noticing any improvement. I'm like, you know, DHA has been like for, we've known this for two decades is so much better for the vaginal tissue, the vulvar and vaginal tissue. And let's not forget the other important parts of our of our anatomy. And so um, the combination, the way I created Jolva was to combine it with plant stem cell technology and with um, emollients to help it absorb deeply into the tissue. And we know that DHEA works at the cellular level and helps with turning back the hands of time. So the rugation, the natural moisture production, so you're not reliant on a lubricant. And, um, and, you know, with pelvic floor exercises decreases incontinence symptoms. And so it has, you know, we have over 5,000 five-star testimonials on my website and the stories are just beautiful. And I, just a shout out for everyone who's left a testimonial because it's, it's so important to hear your voice. Well, thank you so much for creating the, the product as well as uh, Mighty Maca and the Keto Green. Um, one thing I, I know you had to run, but one thing quickly I wanted to say is that when it comes to DHEA, I know you test for DHEAS. And one thing I liked what you said in the book is that you don't start out with like massive amounts of DHEA. If someone has a DHEA deficiency, you know, you start out with like five milligrams and then, you know, if necessarily gradually decrease. So, you know, I'm glad you do that because I'm like that too. If I recommend DHEA, which I don't for everybody, but again, I definitely recommend starting lower dose and not just like jump into like 50 milligrams right off the bat. So yeah, because what we do when we do that, we suppress the body's natural production. 
And I always say I do hormone replenishment, not replacement. I never want to suppress or take your body's ability to heal away and reliant on something external. So, you know, like we we use it as a complement to our our you know our lifestyle and our mindset and all of these things. We use these um, in 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 companionship because you know there's it's it's never just a pill, a program, a peptide, or anything else, right? It's a lifestyle that we have to create. It's a mindset, and um, and that's what I want everyone to know that it's within their power to be healthy, healthier tomorrow than you are today. Well said, Dr. Anna. And where can people for, find out more about you? Where can people uh, get those products if they want to get the Mighty Maca, the Jolva, the Keto Green? Yeah, so definitely come to my website, which is dranna.com, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And you'll see my my storefront there. There's information on um, trials that you can get. And uh, I think, and I'm at the Girlfriend Doctor on uh, social media. So at the Girlfriend Doctor on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, and lots of great free content for you guys to enjoy. And Dr. Eric, thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, sharing, you know, your your thoughts on the hormones, optimizing hormones, and again, to, um, talk about maca and you know your other products. And again, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Anna.